Welcome back to part three of this video series. We are looking at the creation using Excel of a simple match coding system. And in today's video, we're going to expand what we've done in parts one and two by looking at how you might do an analysis with formula and specifically how you might be able to use that to your advantage in terms of creating a ongoing match database. And so here we are on the front page. I'm using the same data set as we did in part two. We've got 45 minutes, so just one half of football coded. And there's 392 lines of activity here that we can do our analysis with. And just before I kick on, what I want to do is just make a quick change to some of our descriptive information up here. I just by splitting up opponent and event. Now we've just manually typed these in anyway, so um, it's not much of a difference. I just want to split that up because that'll make our databasing just a little bit smoother. So we'll get to that shortly. Anyway, in the last video, we created this data set here and we added a, a few columns that gave us calculations for points and also something we haven't used yet, which was the minute that an activity happened in. I'm going to take advantage of the work that we've done by selecting all of that, copying it, and pasting it onto this sheet. And so it's exactly the same data set. What I am going to do is convert it to a table. just makes our formula writing a little bit more simple. Up in the name manager, I'm going to call it data f, and that just indicates that this table relates to the sheet where we are doing analysis with formula. So next step is I want to create our framework for analysis. And because we've been through that previous example, I just want to minimize as much as I can the width of some of these columns because it's good to be able to see everything a little bit more easily on the screen. Right, so I've got just a little bit more real estate now. And I mentioned that we wanted to create a little framework for our analysis. So this is what I mean by that. I want to populate a grid with one row for each player that has everything relating to the single match. It's got the date, the opponent, the event, their position, the number of events they were involved in, their total points score, and then the breakdown across those five categories. And so to populate this out, the first step is to get a list of player names. There's a few different ways to do it. One way is using the advanced filter, so let's have a look at that. By clicking on name, Control shift down arrow goes right to the bottom of the list. On the data tab, there's a button called advanced. And what it says is, do you want to filter the list in place or copy to another location? We want to copy to another location. We want unique records only. And if I click this little finder button, it opens up the ability for me to select a cell. If I click OK, we've now got everything that we need, which is a unique list. It brought through the title as well, but I can just delete that. And now I've got my unique names. Another way I could have done it would have been insert pivot table, new worksheet, and drag name down into rows. I could then have simply copied those names and pasted them in and a good advantage of that method is that it's alphabetized for us. Then go back to that pivot table sheet and delete it. Don't need it anymore. Next thing is we want to have each row here have a date in it. So I can simply type equals, go to my coding page, and click on our date. It's got a, a time in there and well, as well which has made it a little bit too long for the cell. So if I just convert that to short date, 
put a dollar sign in front of the two, I can copy it down. Components easy, just a direct reference as well. Similarly event. World Cup 2016. Same as before, if I put a dollar sign, it locks the reference. And that means that it doesn't matter how many times I drag it down, it's just going to repeat the cell from above. Now I don't need those. I'm going to hide them for now because this is where we do some interesting formula calculations. We did this in the previous video. VLOOKUP is pretty easy formula. Hopefully it's something you're getting a little bit better at. You want to look up a target value, which in this case is a player name. Where do you want to look it up? We've got a table called player details. We know that it's a two column table and we want an exact match. So done and dusted in the space of a few seconds. This one's a little bit harder. We have to start writing formula now. First formula we're going to use is count if. Now when you're doing formula that are uh, looking at text, count is perfect. So we want to count the number of times that Andy Johnson's name appears in this grid of data. So it's just a single criteria count. We've named our table TBL data F and when I select it you can see the whole table goes blue which tells us we've got everything set up correctly. We want to look in the name grid and find any instances of Andy Johnson or whichever name happens to be in this cell. So he's had 27 events and you can double click and copy that down. Now we could do a sum if in two ways and it might be a good exercise to do it both ways just to see if we're calculating things to correctly. Let's do the first one. Sum if single criteria sum. What is our range? Just like it was before there's the person's name. If that equals Andy Johnson then sum whatever is in one of the two points col columns. So we did it two ways, a complex and a simple way. They both gave us the same answer so it doesn't matter which one we choose. Close that bracket off and it gives us total points. Let's try and keep it as narrow as possible. And now for each of the five categories, we want to calculate the total points, the number of times they did that particular event, positively, neutral, or negative. I put neutral as a Z there, indicating zero, simply because we couldn't have N for both. So I could have spelled the whole word out, but I wanted to keep it really, really tight. Because we're using numbers, we have to do sum if. Because we've got multiple criteria this time, it needs to be sum ifs. So what is our sum range? The formula tip is telling us what to put in. We want to calculate total points, so we can choose points complex or points simple. What is our first criteria? First criteria is that it has to be the right player. This one. Because I'm going to copy and paste this formula, I am going to put, using the F4 key, a little lock on the column. What is our second criteria? Second criteria is that our event is equal to shot goal cross assist and with the F4 key I'm going to double lock that both column and row. So there are our two criteria as long as it matches that it's going to give us the right answer. Double click send that down. Next we want to count the number of positive 
shot goal cross assist they had. Again, this is a count if because we're only dealing with text, there's no number. Multiple criteria, so we just have to list them one at a time. First one, do we get the name? Second one, is the event equal to shot goal cross assist? And one more to do, was the outcome, and I'm just going to type this in with text, because I'm using text, I, I need to put it inside quotes. And so there's our three criteria, and before I hit enter, just check out that formula for a second, just to make sure you get it. Three criteria count. In the name column, it has to equal Andy Johnson. In the event column, it has to equal shot goal assist. And in the outcome column, it has to equal positive. If it meets all those criteria, we can count it. And if I copy that, paste it, paste it, very small little edit, and we'll be away. Neutral is now sorted. Negative is now sorted. So we've got for shot goal cross assist, total points, the count of positive, the count of neutral, and the count of negative. And so a simple replication of that for the other four is all we need to do to complete this grid out. So just give me a second, I'm going to rush off and do that behind the scenes. So I'm back again now, I've finished those formula, nothing different to what we saw for the shot goal cross assist, just an exact replication, and I'm going to unhide these columns quickly. Because now this is perfect to be databased. All we need is to have a replication of these column headings on another sheet. Luckily I've prepared one earlier. And so we have the ability to paste this data in now. Now if you haven't looked at it, there's a video I did not so long ago called How to Make an Excel Database for Anything. And it's video number 88, the link is here. So what I tried to show you there is that at the beginning of your data set, if you have some descriptors, then analysis is a piece of cake. And so descriptors are player name, date, opponent, event, position, things like that. You can have more or less of those, but the more you have, the easier it is to do analysis on your data later on. And so if we go back to our formula sheet, I'm going to select everything here, click copy, go to my database, and this is quite important, I'm going to do paste values. And so everything comes through just fine, except for these dates. And a conversion will sort that out. And so we've now got the ability, I know this is only for 45 minutes, but let's pretend for a second that this was a whole match worth of data. Now we've got a whole set of data for this game against Germany. There might be another four or five matches at this tournament that you can replicate the process for and paste underneath. And suddenly you have the ability to start saying, well, what's Andy's overall averages like? What's the overall average for defenders? How many total shot goal cross assists are we getting involved in? How many carries and dribbles are positive, negative or neutral? And you can define that down as a whole team, a position group or an individual player. And suddenly you start having the ability to compare a performance of a player against themselves. How did we expect them to perform and how did they perform? And you can get even more specific once you've got a bit of data in your system by saying, when we play Germany, how does he normally play? And so doing comparisons like that starts to sharpen up your analysis and your predictive ability. Now I paste values and that's not necessarily always a good option. The reason why sometimes you might want to have the data be live is that if we go back to our config panel, 
if a coach changes their mind about whether or not a particular event is worth 2 points, 1 point, 3 point, you can edit this grid and all the data will change. But because this is pasted as values, there's not going to be any change. And so um, in a system that I've built, I've been using for about eight years with a particular team I assist, we have got everything live. And so the coach has been able to refine the thinking about what allocations are fair. Live connections to that makes a whole lot of sense. So really all that would look like is that this here, instead of being a number would be a calculation that would be referencing against that config table with all the different allocations per event and position. But this is a nice simple way to think about things. Create some codes, do some analysis, and then database a nicely organized group of data. A single row per player per match is the ideal way to go if you can. In the next video I'm going to fill in this grid with 20 or 30 other matches so we can start to look at uh, some trends over time for players, position groups and the team as a whole.